Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for LowPost.com and I'm back again with another lesson in our Fusion Fundamentals series and in this tutorial I want to talk about probably the one node that you're going to use more so than any other one inside of your Fusion workflow and that is the Merge node. Now, I specifically wanted to have an example of one of my composite setup here utilizing the Merge node and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how we can create this composite relatively quickly, relatively easily inside of Fusion, again, using that merge node as the centerpiece. Now, before we get rolling, you know that I always sort of have a mini lesson before we get started. And in this lesson, it's all about the nodes window. We're going to talk about how to get in, zoom in, move it around. And I want to show you how we're going to be able to bypass nodes, why we're going to want to do that and how simple it is to do. All right, let me just stop our animation from playing and let's talk about navigating around the nodes window. All right, now before we get rolling, as always, I wanna remind you, we value your feedback. I value your feedback. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions or things that you wanna see in an upcoming lesson, head on over and post all of your comments in the forums at lowpost.com slash forums. All right. So let's talk about our nodes window here. Now you might notice from time to time me quickly getting in and panning around the window. Now what I'm doing to pan around the windows, I'm simply using the middle mouse button on my mouse. Now, of course, that does beg the question, well, what happens if you don't have a middle mouse button? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Shift and Command on the Mac, Shift and Control for all my Windows friends out there, and this does the exact same thing as holding the middle mouse button on the keyboard, okay? Now, what if we wanna get in and zoom in on our nodes? Now, you might think that we'd use that middle mouse wheel. In my case, it's a mouse wheel to then, oh, no, you notice I'm sort of zooming in and zooming out, and I'm actually moving the nodes up and down. What I wanna do is add in a modifier key into that to actually get the zoom in and zoom out to happen. I'm just gonna hold Command on the Mac, Control on Windows, and I can now zoom in or zoom out of these nodes as close or as far back as I want, really dependent on how many nodes I have rolling around in here. Now, what is also very cool and very interesting, you'll notice that when I zoom in and I look at these nodes, we talked in a previous lesson about the color coding of them, basically telling us exactly what these nodes are doing. Well, you'll notice that when I zoom out, those nodes just entirely turn to that color, which is very handy if you need to get in and quickly figure out what shot is what in case you need to swap something out. Now, another way to zoom in and zoom out of the node window, which is not one that I'm a huge fan of, just because my fingers don't exactly work this way, is I'm gonna hold that middle mouse button and I'm gonna hold the left mouse button. You'll see I get that arrow on the screen and I can now zoom in and zoom out a lot slower, so more precise. For me, I just find this to be a little bit of a clunky way to do it, but again, it's all based on how you like to work. Now, last but certainly not least, what we also have the ability to do is we can right click on the nodes window, simply come down to the scale option, zoom in as much as we want, or as little as we want, or we can set things back to their default scale. Now, what I'm gonna do instead of setting things back to their default scale, is I'm actually gonna scale this to fit. Now, you'll notice that that didn't quite work the way that I wanted it to. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna press Command or Control in one, to get the nodes the size that I want, the size that they were originally when I started this, because I actually wanna zoom in on a couple of them for us to talk about another important concept, and that is bypassing a node if we needed to. Now you might be thinking, well, Kev, why would you ever wanna bypass a node? Well, here's a perfect example. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose this transform node, and I'm gonna press two on the keyboard so that I can isolate this element, okay? Now, once I've isolated the element, you'll notice that I have a couple nodes in between the media in node and the transform node that's actually changing the color and the brightness and contrast of this shot. Now, let's say hypothetically, I wanted to see what this shot looked like before I did that very quick color correction on it. What I can do is simply select that node and I'm gonna press Command or Control and P on the keyboard to bypass that node. Now, you'll see what the color looked like originally again before I got in and did that quick color correction. Again, Command or Control and P to activate the node again so it's ready to go. Now, what you also have the ability to do is to come up to the inspector and you'll notice that we have this little switch right beside Color Curves 1 
It actually looks like an on off switch and that's exactly what it is. We can now turn that node on and off from here as well, but keep in mind, that means that you need to have the inspector open. If you don't have the inspector open, you wanna see what something looks like quickly, again, Command or Control and P on the keyboard to turn that node on and off. All right, now, one of my favorite parts of the lesson. Let's get in and let's destroy this composite that we've made so that we can now get in and recreate it from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to head back to the edit module. We're going to come to our clip. You'll notice all those clips I brought in were right from the fusion module. Let's right click and I'm going to reset that fusion composition. Of course, with a heavy heart, I'm going to say yes, let's reset it. And we are now right back to the default, the way the shot was when I dropped it on. Let's now, with it selected or hovered over, let's head in into the Fusion module. Let's put our nodes, actually we're going to need to space these out a lot. And we're now ready to get started and show you how we can create that composite utilizing the Merge node. Now we've separated these two nodes and as we know, we always want to get in, especially with the composite that you saw before. This is where naming your nodes is exceptionally important. So let's do that. I'm going to select this node F2. This is going to be called Forest Run. Now I'm going to stop putting spaces in between my words because Fusion always ends up taking those spaces and removing them. So we'll just call it Forest Run. Now I'm going to remove the connection between these two nodes. Now normally what I've done in the past is I've just disconnected it like such, but we're going to start utilizing the shortcut, which is to simply come up and you'll notice that the node is actually broken down into two pieces here. You'll see right there. Now what I'm going to do is not click on the back part of the node. I'm actually going to click on the front part of the connection between the two nodes. And as soon as I do that, that's actually going to break their connection. Now we're going to do that quite a bit in this lesson. You'll see as we do it. Okay. So let's take forest run and we're now going to call that up onto monitor one. I'm going to do that by simply utilizing the shortcut of one on the keyboard. Okay. Now let's come up to our media pool and let's choose another shot. Now the two shots that I used off the top was my city run. So let's take city run, drag it and drop it down here. Of course, again, select it F2 city run. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay. And what we now need to decide is what element we want to be the foreground element, what element we want to be the background element. Now, we're doing a very basic composite here, so bear with me because I'm going to be explaining a lot of things as we go. So we're just going to utilize our forest run as the background. We're going to play city run and that other running shot on top of it. Okay, so with forest run selected, I'm going to utilize the merge node. Now we can do that one of a few ways. We can find it from the effects library. I can find it from right here in our node toolbar, or I can use the shift and space bar method to call up the select tool window. Now, because I have access to it right here, I'm simply going to click on it and you'll now see that the forest run is connected to the merge node that we have here. Okay. Now it's also important to keep in mind based on the clip that you have selected, when you add the merge node, it's automatically going to add it to the background input. Now I knew that when I had forest run selected, that's why I did have it selected before I added this merge node. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the input of the foreground and we're going to attach it to city run. And for right now, I'll attach the merge one or the merge, the output of that merge node to the media out node, sending it back to our edit timeline. Okay. Now we're ready to get in and to start making adjustments to this foreground shot. Now, Here's where things get a little bit interesting. And this is, you know, a, a decision that you're going to need to make on how you want to work. Now, because I work with editors, graphic designers, compositors of all different levels, I do things different ways based on who I'm working with. Now, I'm a very visual person. I like to see, I like to be able to look at a node breakdown and see exactly where everything is. Now, with the merge node, that can get to be a little bit deceiving, especially for newcomers to Fusion when it comes to resizing things with the merge node. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to select the merge node. Now we need to make sure that we have the inspector open while we're doing this. Now just to save us a bit of screen real estate, I'm going to close the media pool. There we go. Get our windows back to being relatively large. It'll just give us a little bit more space here. And what I have the ability to do once I add a foreground element to the merge node is I have the ability to get in and make adjustments to things like its position, its rotation, obviously the center position of it, all by just simply doing it by grabbing the window here. You'll see that I can actually grab with the widgets here, okay? Or we can utilize 
the parameters inside of the inspector. Now, with that being said, I can make changes to, or you know, even animation for that matter, to this element, and a newcomer might not necessarily notice it in the node breakdown. So here's how we have two different ways of doing things. I'm just going to undo what I just did, just to put this element back to where we had it, because we do have the option to add a node in between the city run and the merge node. This is where we can get in and add a transform node, which is going to serve a very similar purpose. Okay, You'll see that I can get in and adjust things like the size. We can get in and adjust its, of course, rotation like we just did and even its position. But I want to show you what the main difference is between working this way and working the other way. Now, this is a very visual way to work. If anybody sits down, they're going to see exactly what I did to this clip before it hits that merge node. But again, like I said, it does come with a few issues. Okay, I'm actually just going to take its size, shrink it down a little bit more, and I'm just going to place it up here, okay, like such. Now, it might be a little bit big, but we can worry about that in just a second. Okay, now I want you to watch what happens when I go back to the merge node, and I'm just going to utilize these two parameters flip. One is to flip horizontally, the other is to flip vertically. So, watch what happens as I start flipping. You'll see that what Fusion is actually doing is it's flipping from the center point, these crosshairs here, of the node itself. So when it does its flip, it's actually taking the center and flipping it all the way over, taking into account there's a bit of space here. Okay, you'll see I'll do it again here. There we go. Okay, and I'll do it vertically as well. Now, let me just remove this transform node. Now, I'm not going to delete it. Command or Control and P on the keyboard to bypass it. Now, you see where all of this starts to come into play with each other. Okay, I'm going to come to the merge node. We're going to do the exact same thing. No difference in what we did. I'm going to shrink it down and reposition it. Now watch what's going to happen when I flip. The shot itself is just going to be flipped and it's not directly being impacted by the fact that we had this transform node here. So this is really a personal preference on how you like to work. Okay, now for the purposes of the rest of this lesson, I'm actually going to utilize the transform node and you're going to see why in just a second and why it's a way that I normally like to work simply for, I'm not going to say ease of use, but just for speed. Okay, so let's take our transform node, let's turn it back on, command or control and P. Now watch this. What I'm going to do is just zoom back a little bit. Now you'll remember from our mini lesson off the top, command or control, and we can now mouse back to give us a little bit more. I'll say node real estate, or it's more so uh, some screen real estate in the node window. And what we want to do now is we want to utilize the exact same type of effect, okay? except we're going to position it down here. But I'm going to utilize the transform node when we're doing this. Okay, So let's bring in another shot. Now we're going to use another running shot. And I believe the running shot I used before was this one. Okay, Now I'm just going to call this one, of course we've got to name it, we'll call it Forest Run 2. Okay, so there's Forest Run 2. I'm just going to call it up on the left-hand viewer. There we go. Now you'll see why I got in and added that little bit of a color correction, a little bit of the brightness contrast effect to this because it is a little bit dark and it's a little bit blue. But we'll worry about that in just a second. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to basically take this shot and combine it into this shot. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this composite is now going to become the background this element is going to become the foreground. Okay, But before I do that, I'm going to add this transform node to this shot. Okay, Now you might be thinking, I'm going to come up, I'm going to select transform, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to redo everything, don't have to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the transform node, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to select the force run 2 shot, I'm going to paste it, and we've now added that transform parameter to our force run 2 shot. I'm also going to disconnect our connection to the media out node and what we're going to do with this merge node selected is we're going to add another one. Now remember, this entire composite now is going into the background of merge 2. I'm going to take the foreground and connect it to our forest run 2, and we're now going to connect this to the media 1 out node. Now you'll notice that this shot replaced the other one in the upper right hand corner. Well, it didn't exactly replace it, it just put the shot over top of it. So all I'm going to do now is simply grab this element drag it south, and we now have both of them on the screen at the same time. Now, also keep in mind that I added a few more nodes in there as well. 
Now we can do that if we want to, so let's just go ahead and do it. Now, the two nodes that I used, I used the color curves, and all I simply did for the color curves was I found the highlights of the blue just to be a little bit, or the highlights of our shot just to be a little bit too blue. So I'm just gonna deselect everything else. I'm just gonna grab the highlights, just bring them down just a little bit. Now again, keep in mind, Commander, Control, and P to see the before and the after. I just wanted to do it just a little bit. We're just gonna move these two nodes over here. And of course now, with our color curves node selected, we're gonna do a brightness and contrast change. Now the one thing I love about this node is it's not just brightness and contrast. It's lift gamma gain, brightness and contrast. Okay, lift being the blacks, gamma being the mids, and gain being the highlights. So you'll see the shot's a little bit dark in the mid-tones. So let's bring the gamma up a little bit. I'm just gonna bring the blacks down. Now you'll notice that as soon as I start to bring the blacks down in our composite, it's impacting the background as well. So how do we actually get in and make sure that this node is only impacting this and not everything else? We're gonna turn on the pre-divide post multiply parameter and as soon as I do, you'll now see that once we start adjusting the lift, it's gonna adjust the darkest parts of the shot just the way we wanted it, bring that gain up just a little bit and now you can see what the before and after look like. There we go for both of those. I can also select them both at the same time and turn everything on and everything off to see the before and after. Now one last thing I want to do before we wrap this up is just have our elements stagger on. Now you'll remember, you'll see how we're tying all this together with previous lessons and with stuff that we've learned at the start of this lesson. I'm going to come up to the keyframe window and let's just give ourselves a little bit, again, more screen real estate here. Everything is laid out for us here. Now you'll see the most important thing is that media out node. You'll see tells us exactly how long that we have in here. Not too long, but that's okay. Our city run element is going to be basically cutting on first, okay? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it roughly about there, I think. And forest run two is gonna be the next one to come on. We're gonna have it come on right about there. Now you'll notice it disappeared from the left viewer. Don't worry about that. The only thing that we have to worry about, and I'm just gonna drag up our keyframe window just a little bit because my recording resolution is not the same size as my standard screen resolution here, but you can now see that what we have is we have our shots staggering on. You'll see I can come back to the beginning. Basically what we have is we have our running shot come in, we have our city jogging shot come in, and then we have our forest two running shot, and then we get to the end of what is contained inside of our edit timeline. All right, our lesson is done, but the conversation has only just started. Don't forget, if you got any questions, I want you to head on over and post them in our forums at lowpost.com slash forums. And if you have any questions for me, you can always send them to kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.